Well, it rained all morning, and it's still hazy outside, but it's 60 degrees in December, so I'm going fish. And I'm still in my grill. Welcome back, another day out here on the lake. Uh, so the goal today is to catch some white bass, hybrid bass, and uh, instead of frying them, we're gonna try to smoke them. We've never actually smoked any, anything we caught, we've only ever smoked um, salmon, which we can't catch around here, so <laughs> have to buy that. But, so yeah, we're gonna try to smoke it up and see how it tastes. And we do this every weekend, so if you wanna see more of it, like and subscribe this for this video. <laughs> The amazing part about today is that there's almost no wind. So we don't have to be half power on the trolling motor just to stay still. I think the last three times we've been out, the wind was like 10 to 15 miles per hour. So it feels good. Bottom is 30 feet. Fish are 10 feet off the bottom. We're gonna attempt that doing some trolling. Troll back into this cove here. The fish tend to be, they're in small schools, but they're all over the place, so maybe we'll have some better luck trolling. I don't know, but we'll try it. And again, we'll try between one and 1 1.2 and see how that goes. It's kind of tough trolling with these treble hooks because if you if you do touch the bottom, it will, it, it will get stuck. But yes, yeah. And you can tell we come back here a lot by all the uh, the lines of the paths with, that we've, we've already taken. There's a lot of fish. This was far back there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good sized fish. Nice. Oh, I missed it. There we go. All right, well, I'm happy. <laughs> oh, oh, I got one. Okay, it's looking to be a really good day. I just love catching fish on this rod though. <laughs> this one, maybe a little bigger. Maybe not. Could be a bluegill, I suppose. <laughs> This might be crossing this line. I might need your help. Try to fight it out of there. I'll need the net again, yeah. Come on. Good fish. Nice. Yeah, 
another good fish, second one of the day. If we keep, keep catching them this fast, I'll be happy. See, this line's kind of rough. You might not be able to see, but I'm going to cut it and retie it. Second one we just caught on this real tiny spoon. Again, just silver. First fish was, I think, on a one ounce spoon, so that was pretty big, but I can't use big spoons on this tiny rod. It won't, uh, it will not let me. Ultralight going back out. Uh, yep, still going 1.2. When I troll, I like to keep my drag kind of loose just so that I can tell when I have a fish by the sound, not just looking at it. But it has to be tight enough, obviously, to actually set the hook. Let's use this uh, little white with a multicolor back. There you go. The one day our battery died. Actually, it was the day that we were camping on that island over here. and. We got back to shore and we were sitting there at the marina and a guy was talking to us and <laughs> we just got to talking and he said that a lot of the people he knows like to boat more than they like to fish. You know, they go 60 miles an hour to their favorite fishing spot on the entire opposite side of the lake and then wonder why they don't have any gas. <laughs> we always stay, I mean, th this spot here is only a 15 minute, maybe 10 minute boat ride back to the marina, so. And we, we're confident that we can catch fish here, so that's why we always come back. Oh, hey. Oh, there we go. That, that's a pretty good one. Nice. <laughs> that's what I get for not paying attention. Maybe I need to complain more and then they'll bite. <laughs> I think it's good. It's hard to tell. We're still moving, so look at the other rods too. Yeah, good. He's hard. He's he's hardly hooked. So. Okay. Nice. Oh yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's so funny when we catch the crappie trolling because they just kind of float to the surface and that's it. They're done. Come on. Well, maybe we could smoke a crappie too, see what that tastes like. Still good fish. Must have trolled over a tree there. You got it? I don't know, it's, they have to be 10 inches or 10 inches long in this lake, so. Oh yeah. It's like, oh, you wanna keep that? Yeah, sure. And keep a variety. So this is a Minn Kota Riptide trolling motor and trolling with it, it accurately is, is very easy because you have a um, heading lock, which determines if you, which helps you stay in a straight line, essentially. And then the you know speed lock, which and hold your speed to whatever you want. So I just set it to 1.2 and pretty much say go straight and it does it. Looks like we found some. Looks like some big ones under some bait again. I'll take a screenshot and put it up on the screen. Looks promising. Come on, fish. Um, ooh, I got, a, I got one on here. I dropped it down and Ooh, ooh, this is a good one. Nice. Man, this is a monster. Oh, it's gonna be totally tangled, so. Oh, man. This is a medium light rod, but it's even bending this real well. Yes. The one you were saying was really nice. <laughs> oh, this is half, this has to be a nice fish. No, that's a, no, not that one. These over here. Oh my gosh, yeah, that one. 
as fast as you can. No, no. <laughs> then I think that was too loose. I have no idea what this is. Oh, with, it's, it's tangled on mine, I think, so. Hold on, wait, don't, let me. Okay, go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, it's twisted. Jeez. Hold on, just. Okay. Man, this is, this is a good fish. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't think I've ever caught a fish this big before. Holy crap, it is a giant hybrid. Wow. Watch the camera behind you. What piece of crap? Darn it. Keep the line tight. Do you need the net? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Oh yeah, that's a good white bass. Nice. That's a that's a good fish though. That's yeah, a really good fish. It's not a it's white. It's a white bass, but yeah, even if it wasn't, you know, it's only it's not, it's not, it's still pretty good. It's a really good fish. What? Oh. <laughs> Can you get the net? Sometime today. was the first one on these white spoons, so that's good. Yeah. That's a good fish though. We have enough fish though, we'll let this one go. We're just gonna do one more pass through here and then uh, head out after. I know you, I know that's what everybody says, but I'm serious. <laughs> Catch that huge one that got off earlier. I'm still angry about that. And I want to keep talking about it too. It got colder too. It's probably only 55 maybe and wind picked up a little. It's not too bad, but How the birds still. Today. Oh yeah, lots of birds. I'm not sure if you can tell, but yeah, over by that pump house thing there's a whole bunch of birds circling. My trolling motor battery is about dead anyway, so I suppose it's time we uh, head back in. <laughs> yeah, full throttle. We were going like 0.5 miles per hour, so we'll have to see. I'm not sure if the batteries are if I have to actually replace the batteries or if it's just dead, but we'll see.
one of these white bass here just so you can kind of see you know, how you do it. So the first thing I start right behind the gill plate and just give it one slice. Sometimes the gills will fight with you. Um, you want to be careful not to get inside the rib cage at all though because you don't want to really punch or anything in there. Okay. So just like that and then I go up the back right beside the spine. This definitely helps if you have a sharp knife to do this nicely. Okay, just like that, and I like to leave the back attached, and I'll show you why here in a minute. Get to clean the scales off my knife. Just one more back there. So from here, I'm going to go along the spine and just peel the meat away off of it. Oops. Then once you get up to the front, I just like to cut it along the spine again and just kind of ride the rib cage all the way down. I did bleed this fish um, earlier. I didn't do a great job of that, as you can see. Just ride it along the back. Until, until the very end. So if you're going to take the skin off, I like to leave it attached um, back here by the tail. That way you can kind of use the fish's body to hold it as you um, peel the skin off. But for the smoking, I'm actually gonna leave the skin on only because I don't want um, to dry it out and I'm thinking that might help a bit with that because fish is very good to dry. So you can see I did, I left a little bit of meat on here. I wasn't near as close to the spine as I would like, as close to the you know skeleton as, as I would like to, uh, but we'll try again on the other side. As you can see, I got a lot more meat off the second side um, than the first one. Then I'm going to go ahead and fillet these four, and then we'll put them in a dry brine before we smoke them and leave them sit overnight. Here they are. I have the ones that would fit in the bottom of this tray. I have others on the cutting board over here. So basically all I'm going to do is start with a little bit of salt. I always use coarse ground kosher salt for this. A little bit of that. And then some brown sugar over top of that. the rest of the fish. And then back to the salt. And back to the brown sugar. And I always add a little bit of whiskey to my brines too because I think it gives it a good flavor. I put it in bacon and fish and everything else that I like to cure. Not too much, so otherwise it'll kind of overpower it. And when I did the bacon last week, it was a bit too strong. And there we go. So we'll leave that in the fridge overnight and uh, I'll see you tomorrow at the, at the smoker. I just took the fish out of the fridge, so have a look. Pulled a ton of moisture out of the fish, which is exactly what we wanted, so we'll go ahead and rinse these off and uh, toss them on the, on the smoker. So I use this offset smoker uh, here for smoking, so what I'm going to do is start with a fire starter in, in the firebox, just so I can light it with a lighter. Then I'm going to use charcoal for heat and uh, pecan wood for the actual smoke. Usually add a few pieces of paper too just to help with starting it to get it going. Yeah, 
down to the bottom of my bag of charcoal, so I need to get a new one. And I'll put a few chunks of wood in there too, just to help it get going. Okay. I will light it up and uh, we'll leave it go for a bit. All right, fire starter's lit, so we'll leave that sit for a while. And once the fire burns down a bit, I'll close everything and let that heat up. Put the vents open. I think it's worth noting that if I do use a fire starter, uh, I don't close any lids or put any meat on until the fire starter burns down because I prefer if my meat didn't smell like whatever candle I used to make that to make that fire starter. Temperature stabilized to about 200, so I'm going to put these fillets on. I always have a hard time keeping the temperature of this grill very low. Um, if I have to keep it below 200, I usually have to pretty much monitor it the whole time to keep it from actually just going out completely. So I think 200 is, is good enough for this. I'll let these sit out and kind of air dry a bit so they have a, a bit of a pellicle on them. I'll put the smaller fillets further from the heat source scale on that one. Crappy. We'll leave them on there for, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how long it'll take, but um, the thermometer will tell. So we'll, we'll leave them on there and keep checking them a couple times during the cook. It's been about a half an hour, although I had a bit of a power excursion, so I figured I'd check it now, cool it off a little bit. Got up to 300 there for a second, so. Check a couple different pieces though. <laughs> that one's already done. <laughs> that is crappy. I'm at 140. It's got some time to go. This one's yep, 165. That one's done. Yep, that's done. Okay, well all the far ones, well the ones close to the fire are done, so I'll pull them off now. Alright, leave these ones on for a bit. It's been an hour and 15 since I first put them on, so let's give these a temperature check. These are uh, about done too, so we'll take these off and then do a little taste test between the crappie and the, the white bass. Alright, so all the fish is done. We just made some rice and some vegetables along with it, and we're just going to do a taste test between the, the crappie and the white bass. We, we each have one, so let's do the crappie first. Is it small? That one, yeah. yeah. Stiff. That's good I didn't overdo the salt or the whiskey this time. That's good. Mm -hmm. Now, now, let's try the hybrid, or try the white bass, excuse me. 
I prefer the white bass. Me too. Yeah. I've always preferred the white bass. Yeah, I don't know. We Every time we cook crappie, whether we fry it or just deep fry it or just pan fry it, I think we always prefer the white bass over the crappie. But it's, it's really good though. The white bass doesn't smell that to me. It seems more, it's almost even dry as the crappie. But that might have just been. Probably because it's smaller. No. Mm -hmm. Wait, either way. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Mm -hmm. So I think next week, I'm currently planning on going to a different lake to try to fish for some walleye. I've never actually caught one, but I want to do the same thing. I want to smoke walleye. I want to try some trout. There's a couple places around here where we can catch wild trout and some stock too. So it will be interesting to, to do a comparison between those two. So if you're interested to see more of that, give us a like and, and uh, subscribe.